Hello and welcome to an overcast Melbourne cricket ground for the second Carlton Mid ODI Tri-Series match between Australia and India. The Aussies got off to a flyer in Sydney with a bonus point win over England, while India will be looking to shake off their 2-0 Test Series loss and start their march to the World Cup with a win here today. Let's have a quick look at the wicket. As you can see, it's very, very flat. There's a nice even grass covering on this wicket. No cracks to speak of. I think it's going to play really well. There was an ODI here earlier in the summer between Australia and South Africa and the Aussies chased down 268 to win with an over to spare. So expect a similar total here in the first innings. Now these two teams have played 41 days in Australia, with the home side winning on 29 occasions and the visitors 10. But five of those victories have come here at the G. So win the toss and bat first, right? Well, if you're George Bailey, there's one big reason why you might consider fielding first, and his name is Virat Kohli. Kohli's record in ODI cricket is simply incredible. He's got an average of 52.61, he scored 21 centuries, and he's the fastest man to 6,000 ODI runs. But it's in run chases where the Kohli legend really lies. Kohli averages 64.26 in run chases, and with 14 centuries, it's second only to Sachin Tendulkar on 17, though the little master has batted 152 more times. And in victories, those numbers are even better, with 13 of 14 tons coming in wins at an average of 86.63. So Bales, if you do win the toss, maybe think about having a field, and that way you can get the ball in the hands of Mitchell Stark. In his Man of the Match performance in Sydney, Stark claimed his 50th ODI wicket in just his 29th match, the same number as champion fast bowler Brett Lee. While the left armer wasn't the fastest Aussie to the milestone in terms of matches, he does, however, have a better strike rate than, well, anybody. Taking a wicket every 25.8 balls, Stark is more lethal than the extreme pace of Sean Tate and Brett Lee. Just falling outside the 50 wicket cutoff is Ryan Harris with 44, but the veteran has to be mentioned. In 21 matches for Australia, Rhino takes a wicket every 23.4 deliveries. Our viewer question today comes from Mr. Stephen Snell. Good morning, call me Stephen. I'm familiar with many things, computer systems, but what are all those lines on the pitch? Those lines are indicators for the players and umpires. Let's start with the bowling crease. This line bisects the stumps and used to be the line where bowlers had to keep at least one foot behind it or was deemed a no ball. To eliminate tall bowlers gaining an unfair advantage with their long stride, the no ball rule was changed in 1963 to make the pop increase the line you had to stay behind. The name comes from those black and white days when to score a run, a batsman had to tap or pop their bat in a hole in the middle of the crease. To run a batsman out, you had to put the ball in the hole before the batsman got there. The pop increase is also the line used for stumpings and runouts, and this line belongs to the umpire, so make sure you've got something behind it. These lines are guides for umpires to determine wides in limited overs cricket, and these ones, called the return crease, are so a bowler doesn't run in from cow corner. Touch one of these when bowling, and it's a no ball. Thanks for the question, Stephen. I've got a very good feeling about you. Don't forget to download the Cricket Australia Live app for all your new scores and video. It'll hit you for six. Well left.